Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a biography, comedy, and drama film from 2011 titled The End to Shabla. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. One late night in Paris, Driss is driving his employer Philippe through the city. When waiting in traffic gets too boring, Driss breaks the speed limit and begins driving quite fast, dodging other cars and not caring about traffic signs. This causes the police to go after him, and Driss bets 100 euros that he can lose them. But after driving under a bridge, the cops catch up by ambushing them from both sides. Driss doesn't look too worried though, and this time, he bets 200 euros that he can get them an escort. The cops make him leave the car and he starts acting then, behaving offendedly and telling them Philippe can't move and he was taking him to the hospital. The officers find proof of this when they find the wheelchair in the truck and, when approaching Philippe, they see him convulsing, which is also an act. Seeing as it's an emergency, the cops forgive Driss for breaking the speed limit and offer themselves as escorts on his way to the hospital. To celebrate winning the bet, Driss plays September by Earth, Wind, and Fire, and when they arrive at their destination, he shares a smoke with Felipe as soon as the cops are gone. Driss promises he'll handle it and drives them away just before the hospital staff could find them. This friendship began many months ago. Felipe and his assistant Magali are holding interviews to find a new caretaker for him. But it isn't going too well, because all applicants have very standard or awkward answers to their interview questions. But they're suddenly surprised when Driss storms in, ignoring the fact it isn't his turn quite yet, because he only wants some papers to be signed saying they won't hire him so he can get the unemployment benefits. He's blunt and a little rude, even hitting on Mongali, but Felipe finds him amusing and asks him to come back the next day for his signed papers. Driss goes back to his home in a humble neighborhood and tries to take a bath while all his little siblings bother him, only managing to get it done in time thanks to his sister Mina who is a bit older than the others and more responsible. So, while waiting for their mom to arrive, he looks through the window and notices his brother Adama getting out of a suspicious car. When the boy enters the apartment, he just says he was at school and leaves again after grabbing his bag, causing Driss to be even more sure that he's up to something. In the evening, his mom arrives, and he gives him a Faberge egg he stole and tells her he's been away on vacation when she asks. She isn't happy to see him though, because he disappeared for six months and never called, and now he's shown up out of nowhere as if her home was a hotel. As she's absolutely done with all his lies and she has other children she has to take care of, she kicks him out and tells him not to come back. Driss spends the night having a smoke and some snacks with some neighborhood friends. The next day, Driss goes back to Philippe's house for his papers, and he's received by the housekeeper Yvonne, who shows him around the place and tells him about Philippe's daily routine. She also shows him the room he would get for himself with his very own bathroom. Driss can't help staring at the bathtub before he's dragged to see Philippe who offers the housekeeper a signed sheet of paper but also a job opportunity. Driss accepts the one-month trial, and Philippe tells him he bets he won't last two weeks. After bringing his things to his room, Driss is taught how to take care of Philippe. He must learn how to keep his legs stimulated, how to put him in the wheelchair, how to help him shower and change his clothes. Things get awkward when Driss discovers he must put on him some high stockings, and even clean his butt after Philippe uses the bathroom. But no matter how much he complains and says he won't do those chores, he ends up accepting them as part of his job. Later in the evening, while he's enjoying a snack on the roof, he's interrupted by Philippe's daughter Alyssa and her boyfriend Bastion, who are looking for a private place to make out, and he kicks them both out after refusing to share his beer. Driz quickly gets used to the daily routine with Philippe, even if at first he does make some mistakes he learns from, like handing the phone to Philippe instead of putting it on his ear or forgetting the baby monitor while having a bath. He also learns to organize his mail in different folders, most of the letters he opens for Philippe, but there's a series of private ones he isn't allowed to look at. When he finds a flyer promoting female escorts, he decides to start a file just for those instead of throwing them in the trash as Felipe says. It's not all work in this new life though, Driz still makes sure to have a good time. He keeps trying to hit on Magali to no avail, and sometimes calls escorts to join him in bed. One morning, after Yvonne comes to his room to scold him for being late, she finds some dangerous weapons in his bag, but she doesn't comment on them yet. Driz's work today is to drive Philippe around but he refuses to put him in the back of a van as if he was cargo, so instead, he takes him on one of the fancy cars that don't see much use. Philippe, who first thinks this isn't suitable and says they should be pragmatic, is soon getting excited at the idea of a faster, less boring ride, although Yvonne still disapproves. When they try to leave the building, there's a neighbor parked at their entrance, ignoring the sign on the door that says it's forbidden. Driss wastes no time and goes after the guy, grabbing him by the front of his shirt and threatening him until he moves the car. Philippe is impressed by his 
his actions, but Yvonne once again disapproves. The pair goes to a museum, where Philippe is planning to buy a piece of artwork that Driss considers not worth the money because it's just a red blotch on the campus. Afterward, Philippe meets with a relative of his, who tells him, everyone, is worried about Driss since he can be violent. He's also discovered he has a criminal record, but Philippe doesn't care. He appreciates Driss because he doesn't pity him and doesn't mind joking around with him. After another failed attempt at hitting on Magali, Driss has dinner with Yvonne in the kitchen while listening to Philippe dictate a letter to Magali, claiming it's a private conversation. Yvonne turns off the baby monitor and proceeds to explain what's going on. Philippe is pen pals with a woman called Eleonore. Those are the letters he didn't let Driss open, but he's never met Eleonore in person. Their relationship is purely epistolary. Speaking of love, Driss teases Yvonne for the looks the gardener gives her all the time before going to bed. He's trying to sleep when he hears some weird sounds coming from the baby monitor. Philippe is having trouble breathing, not being capable to ignore him even if he tries. Driss goes to his room and gently guides him through the attack with soothing words and a wet cloth to wipe his face. Philippe eventually falls asleep, only to wake up again moments later, saying he needs air. This time Driss doesn't hesitate. He puts Philippe in the wheelchair, covers him with blankets, and takes him out for a stroll by the river. This is the first time Philippe has seen Paris at night in a long time, and now he's more relaxed. He explains to Driss that the medicine can only do so much and he sometimes experiences phantom pain. When they see some girls walking by, Philippe also confesses he isn't capable of pleasuring a woman because of his situation, but he still can enjoy some satisfaction when he gets his ears massaged because they are sensitive zones. When the phantom pain threatens to appear again, Driss shares one of his joints with Philippe, who is skeptical at first but ends up loving it. Afterward, they go to a restaurant, where they joke around while sharing a meal, and Philippe decides to share more of his story. He met his wife when they were students, and shortly after they got married, she had five miscarriages and was diagnosed with an incurable, terminal illness. That's when they adopted Alyssa. Felipe has always loved competitions, extreme sports, and speed, and a paraglider gave him that. It was during a paragliding session that bad weather caused him to crash and break his vertebrae, although he still thinks his real handicap isn't the chair, but living without his wife. After joking around so more, Felipe remembers the date and realizes Droz has passed his one-month trial, so he's now officially hired. But he needs to start by bringing back the Faberge egg he stole because it was a gift from his wife. She would give him one every year, and he has exactly 25, matching their time together. The next day, Droz goes to talk to Mina when she's leaving school, who is a bit offended because he hasn't been answering her messages except to ask her to look for the egg. She also tells him about some cops that have been calling their home. Afterward, he visits Adama, who confesses he was found with 30 grams on him. Driss wants to take him to lunch, but Adama refuses and instead gets in the same suspicious car from before. Later on, Driss is allowed to be present while Philippe dictates his letter for Eleonore to Magali. He thinks this purple prose is very boring and that Philippe should be more direct. He's also baffled to hear that this has been going on for six months and they never exchanged pictures. When he finds her phone number on one of the letters, he takes it as a sign and calls her, obliging Felipe to take the phone and finally speak to her outside the written word. Their conversation goes so well, Felipe is now on the phone with her all the time, even right before he and Driss attend the opera, during which Driss laughs and makes fun of the costumes. The next day, Driss convinces Felipe to accept to exchange pictures with Eleonor, and chooses one of him in the wheelchair. Afterward, while he's painting, Alyssa bursts into his room to ask him for cigarettes and makes fun of him. Hey. Hey,